Good morning. Welcome to church. Um, this morning we'll, uh, um, if you unable to make it today, so we won't have any music. So we'll go right into, um, um, in, right into, does anybody have any, uh, um, anybody put, a, yeah, Linda, <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, prayer list. Um, Yes, Miss Linda, she will be having heart surgery. And we definitely pray for her. Any others while we're... Um, oh, boy. That's, that, yeah. Oh, poor Julia. I was wondering why... I'd, I hadn't seen him at kind of at work for the. Has he been to work for the last couple of days? Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Well, I usually I'm usually gone by five o'clock or six. I did Monday, I think it was. I, I was finishing up and he pulled in. But, anyways, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all, Bruce? Um, and then, of course, um, I didn't find out about it until late Wednesday. I'm sure everybody heard um, Dick Jervelin passed away. His funeral was la just Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, Jervy, Jervelin's own Jervelin's Dick, yeah, passed away at 90, I can't remember how old he was now, 90 something, but yeah. Anyways, um, there was somebody else that I, huh. people text me at the beginning of the week and I write it down, but I don't write it anywhere. I bring it so anyways um, any others while I'm trying to contemplate my thoughts Julia absolutely all right if there's none other then we will go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for providing for our needs this week and bringing us all back here to celebrate your love, to understand more and more of your word. We thank you, Lord, that you sent the biggest gift of all, your son, that the healing power that he has will outweigh any in this world. And we thank you for that for his death, his burial, and his resurrection on the cross. All we have to do is believe, and we know that we'll have his righteousness. We thank you for that. And as we go through the week, Lord, we just ask that uh, those that are sick, that you restore them to health. Just, just may be just something small, but it may be something big. Just get it checked out and taken care of. And for those that are um, maybe need a medical, Lord, we just ask that you be there with them, understanding that you're in control. And then we ask, Lord, that you guide the hands as they go through whatever medical procedure they're going through and take care of them and bring them back to full health. And for the personal things that are going on this time of year, we just ask, Lord, that you be there with all of them. I know of a few young people right now that are going through um, some of the winter blues and just need, need somebody to stand by, stand by them and encourage them and keep them moving forward. We thank you for all you've done for us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Um, and as for announcements, um, I think we've landed on the dates for camp. <laughs> I've been, at least that's what I've been telling everybody what we discussed. So, um, 
Um, <coughs> excuse me. The dates again for camp, senior counselor night, Friday the 20, no, excuse me, Friday, July 12th. Uh, senior camp will be July 13th through the 16th and junior camp July 19th through the 21st. Um, and I know there was kids already asking about that. Have they been asking on you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's been the main thing is adults asking so they can get their time put in um, for vacation. And um, other, I've had a few kids asking. So, um, so that's why I'm starting to crank up again for the year. Um, other than that, um, I don't have anything else. Does anybody else? Do you have anything? Yep. Yep. Something. I know they've been they've been picking at it. Yeah. When are we getting together again? When are we getting together again? Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> we're 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 working on it. Just. Um, I do have an idea, but it might, we have to see where it goes. I have a couple calls in, but it may, it might, well, I'll talk to you after about it. Cause it, it's, it's a trip and it's, it's something that's huge and something that's huge in this, kind of in this area too. And we might end up with 80 kids wanting to go, so. But, yeah, we, but, <laughs> so, um, but we'll talk about it. And um, other than that, I can't think of anything else at this time. So with that, we will move on to the message. We've been going through John, the book of John. Like I said, when we started this, it's, it's always been um, good to go back to that foundation of Christ and, and through his, through John's book of Christ and um, I think of the Gospels, John's one of the easier ones to understand and if, if you are taking your time to go through, this is one of the, one of the books that has to be on your reading list. Um, I was visiting with a um, younger man uh, this week, and um, it just so happens that he is related to somebody that I used to go to high school with or was done, and, and he was talking about that at his church, and he asked me, he just did found out that I was speaking here, and and um, they do a book a month in the Bible, and he was struggling through Chronicles. And I said, boy, you, you, you picked a book to, to, being young in the book, I said, you picked, you picked a really, um, quite a book to try and go through. I said, if you um, get to the point, I said, you need help, just you know, call and ask. But I said, have you ever read the book of John? And he said, no, this is, you know, just basically. And I said, if you get a chance, um, look through John, or read John. Because John is a little bit more, a um, um, little bit more forgiving. I hate to say forgiving, but it's a little easier to read than some of the others because the translation of John is a lot easier when they translated it into English than say Mark or even Matthew because that was right from Hebrew. And it's a little bit more easier to understand. So with that, we'll move on. And where we left off last week was John 15. And also with John it gives you the meat and potatoes of the word. It gives you Christ 
once you understand Christ, you understand his whole being and what he was doing, setting himself up going to the cross. He constantly gave the gospel, but in a way that wasn't the gospel we give now, because it was alluding to what was coming and what he was going to do. He didn't come right out and say, I am going to die on the cross for your sin. But he alluded to where I'm going and the rewards that you and I will get. And it didn't matter if it was Jew or Gentile, we all benefit from where Christ was to go. So we'll start off here in uh, chapter 15, verse 18. And it says there, and I, I use this verse a lot, especially when you're talking with young people or somebody that's new to the new to the gospel or newly saved. Because they get on fire and then all of a sudden the world collapses on them and they, under, they don't understand why. And this is a very good verse to explain it. And we'll start there in verse 18 and it says, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. And it, as we went through John, we can understand that their world was just right there. Although Christ knew the world was bigger, but for, for them there, the world was right there. It was the Jewish nation. That's all they ever thought of. And then he's giving them a preamble to those disciples that were there, and he's talking to them, and he goes, listen, if you come across a roadblock and people seem to hate you for speaking my word, Take comfort in knowing they hated me first. And that's what he was getting at. But really and truly, if they, the world didn't, if the Jewish nation didn't hate him, we would not be saved. He would not have been put on the cross, and we would not have God's love. And we move forward in verse 19, and it says, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. And we see that constantly, of the flesh loving the flesh. But if you are of the Spirit, the flesh roars against you. It always comes to fight against you. And it says, But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And I want to put an asterisk there. It says, you are chosen, but I have chosen you. In, in reference, a lot of people see, 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 you're pre-chosen to be saved. No, once you understand the gospel, once you understand what Christ did on the cross, you chose him. But then he chooses to take care of you. You know, not everyone gets the Holy Spirit. Only believers get the Holy Spirit. And that's what we are as chosen. And as it says there, ye have not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Meaning all believers have the extra out of the world. We are away from the flesh, and we are away from the law. Therefore, the world hateth you. And that's how it is as a, as a believer. And especially if you defend the gospel, if you come forward with the gospel. Yeah, we'll talk about Jesus Christ, but I don't want to talk about where I'm going because a lot of people don't know where they're going when they die. They don't want to talk about death. Well, I might make it there, but I guess I'm not sure. No, you can know. And in verse 20, it says, Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have uh, prosecuted me, they will also prosecute you. 
if they have kept my saying, uh, they will keep yours also. And if you think about it, that's the way it is. If you walk through, say you walk through Walmart, and if you were to give the gospel to everyone in, the, in Walmart, they would be more that come against you than there would be, you would probably be asked to leave at some point in time. Oh, I, I believe that Christ died on the cross, but if it didn't save me. I still need to do something to save myself. No, you just have to believe. But as you, you will come across those that will say, oh yes, I do believe that. I believe what Christ did on the cross, and I believe what he has said. Verse 21, it says, But all these things they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. And that's the point I get across to somebody that is struggling, is why am I, now that I'm um, a believer and I'm God's child, why am I being torn down constantly? Why do I seem to struggle constantly? It is because the world is against you. And who is of the world? Who is the master of this world? Who is the master of the flesh? And that's the devil. And you got to remember, they're not, <coughs> excuse me, they're not attacking you personally. They're attacking what you stand for. Now, if you take that personal, if you take what you stand for personal, then it is personal because it's personal between you and God. And that's why I said, they, they attacked you as a disciple of Christ because they know not what God has said unto you. They know not that God was sent, or Christ was sent to die for you and them. And that's why it says that they know not uh, him that sent me. And it's because they don't know the scripture. They were told this and told this and told this and told that. But they never heard that God sent Christ for all. <clears throat> In verse 22 it says, If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin." But now they have no cloak for their sin. And we run into that still today. There's people that walk upright and righteous and they walk through and, oh, I go by the Lord and I, God sent me and I'm this. But truly it was a cloak. And when Christ came on the scene and he does it now still, to those that hide their trueness. The trueness of Christ being the Savior. They hide it behind the cloak, the, the robe, whatever you see that is to be religious in front. A man once said to me, it is not the outward appearance that makes you righteous. It's the inward belief. You could walk up to a bum in the street and ask him if he knows where he's going when he dies and he can give you the truth just as much as a man that's dressed to the nines. It isn't any different from any person. Salvation is through Christ on the cross. And it doesn't matter if you're a poor beggar to a very rich man. It's the same way. And if they understand what Christ did on the cross, then it's the gospel. <clears throat> Verse 23, it says, He that hateth me hateth my father also. Talking about the devil. I mean, there is many pieces to this. He talking about the devil, and who does the devil run? He runs the unsaved. He runs against us through the unsaved. 
the unsaved and have no idea who God is, and he hates God. But put him into a, into a, a close call of life and death, what's the first thing most people say? Oh, God, help me. Why, why are they calling out to God? Oh, God, help me. Even though they don't believe in him, they still call out to him. Verse 24, it says, If I had not alone, uh, had not done among them the worst which none other man did, and this is John, this is the beginning from what we've seen at the beginning. Christ did these things, and he's explaining why he did these things. They didn't believe who he was. They still didn't believe who he was to a point. But they knew that if he kept doing the things he was doing, that they would look un, um, unread, un, unrighteousness. And it says, uh, which none, none other man did. They had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Because they were following the law at that time. And it's the same now. They were following the law. And they figured, I can do this on my own. I don't need a savior. I don't need nobody else. I will get to heaven on my own. And God said, no. No, you cannot. You cannot come to my perfect heaven because sin was started in the garden with Adam and Eve and that has carried on from then on if you were able to trace your sin back you would follow your lineage all the way back and it would go all the way back to Adam and Eve that's where sin started and it was passed on all them generations up to you, you and I So no man is without sin, and that's why Christ was born of a virgin. Because his father was God. And verse 25, it says, But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without cause. In their law, in the law, God made it put in there that we are not perfect. And that's what he's getting at. The law was to show us we are not perfect. We need a Savior. We needed a perfect Christ to die for our sin. The Lamb without spot was sacrificed for our sin. And it's right in their law. And they didn't see it. They still don't see it. If they follow the law, they still do not see it. It's right there. It's right in black and white in their law that we need a Savior. Verse 26, it says, But when the Comforter is come whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. What joy and peace we have. Because Christ said, listen, I am not going to let you just swim here. I, I Unfaithful. I'm not just going to let you drown in this fleshly world. I am going to send you a comforter. One that will keep you safe. I will not give unto you anything more than you can handle because he will be here with you. And he will help to take care of you. He, if you want to put it, is our life saver. Christ was our life savior He's more of our life guard. He takes care of us 
until the day that God calls us home. And it says, he shall testify of me. You know, even if you say, you've become saved and you say, you know, I'm not sure how I do. How do I do this? How do I move forward? How do I give the gospel? How do I? It's already there within you. That light, when God sent the comforter unto you, once you believe, the light was lit inside of you. That is the comforter. He is the one that shows your light. And he brings you peace. And he brings you joy. And that's what bothers the devil the most. Is that you can live in this world and have joy and peace. Because we know where we're going. And in verse 27, it says, And ye shall all, uh, ye shall, ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. Yes, we, us now are not there from the beginning, but once we believe, we were there from the beginning. As a believer, we were there with him. We walked with him in the sense that everything he did, he did for us. You know, we sing the song, Were You There When My Lord Was Crucified? Absolutely. Because He died on that cross for my sin and for your sin. And you can take that personal. So we were there on the cross with Him when He died because it was our sin that He died for. We move on into chapter 16. Chapter 16, verse 1, it says, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Think of that as Christ talking to us now. He's telling us all these things. Don't be offended by it. Don't worry that the world is coming after you. Don't worry about that. If the world is pointed at you, then you're doing something right. And like I said before, verse 18. Back in verse 18, it says, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And I tie that in with a lot of people saying these things I've spoken in that you not be offended, that the world is coming at you. The devil had nothing to do with you before you were saved because you were going to hell with him. But now that you are saved, he is going to trouble your life from beginning to end. From the day you believe to the day you leave this earth, he will trouble, he will do everything in his power, he'll throw everything at you to destroy you, destroy your testimony, destroy everything in your life. Because now you are going to heaven. And he does not want that. But not only that, he is trying to destroy your peace, he's trying to destroy your joy, because the devil sees other people seeing your joy, seeing the light in you, the comforter in us, and he wants to, to dim that as much as he can so more people don't go with him. Or go, you know, more people go with him. That is the devil's whole vendetta. From the day that God threw him out of heaven, his whole vendetta was to take as many as he could to hell. If I have to go, everybody else is going to. But Christ, God said, listen, you don't have to. I'm going to give you the free will to choose which way you want to go, but you don't have to. You believe what my son did on the cross, you will be saved forever. And the devil will have no bearing on you or your life. He will throw things at you constantly. 
But that's why God give us the comforter. Because it grounds us to God. True. That's why when we go, and it says that, boldly go to the throne. When we go to God, we go through Christ. What more powerful thing is Christ to God? His own son. And when we go asking, we go through Christ. And if it glorifies him, he grants it to us. And it grants it to us, maybe right not, not right now, maybe in time, maybe he gives us pieces, he just slowly feeds us what we need, when we need it, and how we need it. Verse 2, it says, They shall put you out of the synagogue, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think uh, that he do, uh, doth God's service. And you've got to remember, they're talking back in that time, the Jewish people, if you stood up for Christ, if you stood up for what Christ was doing, they, they, well, they crucified the Christians. That is what Saul's job was completely, was to kill all Christians, who later became Paul. Verse 3, it says, And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. It comes back to they still don't know who Christ is, and they don't know the God's wishes. They say, oh, you have to do this, and you have to do that, and you have to do this. This is the traditions our Father has given us, that God give it to our Father. But God give those rules and laws to their father so that we understand that we are sinners. We need a savior. And it says in verse 4, But these things I have told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. And he's directly talking unto the disciples at that time. He's, he, you know, and I've said that through this whole thing, that he has never come out completely and said, I'm going to the cross. I'm going to die for the sins. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die for everyone's sin. He's never put it as plain and simple as that. That's what I'm here for. God sent me. I'm his son. I'm a perfect man. I'm going to the cross. I'm going to die for your sin. But he has put it in the way that we can understand. Once we become believers, we understand. I'm going to a place where you cannot come. And when I come back, you will be allowed to go there. He's talking of heaven. First he had to die and go into the earth because he had to bring those that had died before that had faith and believed what he was going to do, bring those four, and then he ascended into heaven. And now we can follow him into heaven once we believe. And he never told of those things. He slowly worked it up to the answer so that we with our own free will we can understand what he was doing why he was doing it and how he was going to do it he wanted us to understand what his father wanted him to do he wanted us to understand what sin was for what the law excuse me what the law was for the law was to tell us we are sinners and we needed a savior. He moves us forward. 
And he did, said, he basically said, I won't leave you stranded here alone. Yes, you will have other believers and you will have fellowship, but you will not be alone. For I will give unto you a comforter. God will give unto you a comforter. And he will be with you always. So that you may have joy and you may have peace. That in the end, you will be in God's great heaven. <clears throat> but it says, as it says in 4, But these things I have told you. And he's told on and on and on. As you go through John, you can hear the things that Christ... It's, it's, it's something to go back through John and underline the things that he has told us. When he is talking to the disciples, think of it as him talking unto you. Because that's what he is doing. He's talking unto us, all believers. <clears throat> that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. And he is with us. He is with us through the Holy Spirit, through the Comforter. And it's, it's something to understand, just like I said earlier, a man that I talked to this week, He's going through Chronicles, and he's struggling with it. But when you don't have God's word, when you don't understand Christ, you don't understand why Christ died on the cross, those books are very hard to understand. A lot of the, the Old Testament is very hard to understand when you don't understand that it is the prequel to Christ's coming. It's the history of man, the history of God that put us into the place where Christ will come. And here we are in John, that Christ is here and he is about to go to the cross as we lead up on to his, his death. He's bringing back truth to us and telling us what we need to expect. Of course, he was telling the disciples at that time what to expect. But he's telling us. Notice, he doesn't put it in the four tense that if you, after I leave, you stand up for me, this is what will happen. He puts it in the present. When they, um, remember they hated me first. And it's in the present. Because it is speaking to all, all of his saints. All believers. Remember, they hated me first. They may hate you now, but they hated me first. And it's quite the thing that he put it in present tense even though they hadn't, the disciples hadn't endured that yet. But he's putting it there for all of us. So I'll end there, chapter 16, verse uh, 4. And next week we will come back to it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, again we come to you thanking you for your Son, the gift of love that you've given unto us. We know this earth is not our home. We know that the flesh pushes against us. We know that the devil will take every opportunity he can to destroy us but we know that you are here with us through your comforter, through the Holy Spirit, 
You provide for us. You provide what we need, when we need, and how we need. The main thing you provide for us was your son, the gift. We thank you for that, Lord. That his death, his burial, and his resurrection give on us his righteousness that we may go into your perfect heaven. And that we are the light in this dark world. And Lord, we just ask if there is anyone out there that is searching for you, that you may put us in their path, that we may share your love and bring them to understand you and understand what your son did for all of us. We thank you for the joy and the peace and the love you've given unto us. And take care of us through the next week. In Christ's name we pray, amen. <clears throat> the verse that I have for the week is in Hebrews. Um, Hebrews 6, verse 10, and it says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have showed towards his name, in that ye have ministered unto the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Thank you and have a very good week.